Hi. Hi, welcome. Thank you so much for attending. Uh, my name is Terrence Moore. I'm with uh, More Solutions. We go by MSI. And uh, we develop uh, courseware for career and technical education. And all of our courseware aligns to industry certification domain objectives. So uh, students who take our courses will generate uh, grades for higher ed uh, or K-12. And they'll also be simultaneously preparing for the industry certification exam if they choose to go that route. So I'm going to uh, just kind of give a high level overview of our uh, Photoshop course and then uh, Word. Uh, so you can kind of see uh, two of our courses and kind of how they work. So uh, we are what's called an end to end provider. So we actually develop the course content and we um, own our own platform. So the good thing about that is there's no problem we can't solve. Uh, everything from single sign-on to integrating with other platforms because we don't have to worry about any third-party vendors. We can solve problems very quickly should they arise. Uh, one of the first things you notice about an MSI course is on the homepage, we actually brand it for your school or institution. We let you know what course it is and uh, the course logo. We have some great instructor support materials. We have a uh, system for enrolling students that's really easy, uh, user-friendly, and we have a video on how to do that, as well as uh, PDFs. We have a virtual onboarding, whereas if uh, you want to hear everything I'm telling you now, but you want to have the ability to fast forward it and rewind it and pause it, you can watch the onboarding video as many times as you like. We have a knowledge base that allows you to find the answers to your questions if you prefer to go that route. And then we have a support ticketing system, which is pretty standard fare. You click it, fill out a ticket, it instantly gets seen by six people and someone will get back to you, okay? So basically in the way our course is a scaffold, we have a digital check textbook that's chunked and embedded before it's gonna be needed. We have pre and post assessments, one at the beginning of each chapter and one at the end of each chapter to help measure learning gains. I always say we provide you with pre and post assessments because if we don't, you're going to probably have to develop them. So why not save you that time? And we also let you know what learning objectives are going to be covered in that particular chapter. We have uh, knowledge checks after each little bit of reading on the topic pages. And now just a knowledge check to make sure the student read and understood, uh, excuse me, understood the reading. And then we have quizzes, and that's all in chapter one. And chapter two is where we start working in the actual software for the Adobe products. So again, you still have the learning objectives, you still have the pre and post assessments, you still have the topic pages, but now you're doing activities inside the application or in a simulated environment. And you can choose from either right from the home page. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's take a look. So when I click on the uh, learning objectives for that particular chapter, you'll notice there's a read along feature. Chapter one, working in the design industry. And that's great if you have a student that's not a great reader. You can also do this course on any uh, device with an internet connection. So if they wanna have it read to them or read along, that feature is there. We made it unintrusive. So students that wanna utilize it can access it. Students that don't need it, it doesn't dominate the page. Again, we tell you the domain objectives. These are right from Adobe or whatever the exam vendor is or the uh, software vendor. And then we also let you know what key concepts and key terms are gonna be covered in that chapter. Navigation is super duper easy. You just click next to go to the next activity or you can go directly to an activity from the side panel. So this is that pre-assessment I was telling you about. 20 questions, drag and drop, and the student gets immediate feedback. Very simple. And again, it can be done on any device with an internet connection. Okay. So these are the interior textbook pages or topic pages. And you can use these to inform a discussion or a lecture or assign them as reading. But this is where the learning takes place. This is the information that's going to be needed to complete any upcoming knowledge checks and quizzes. This is one of the first knowledge checks, very simple. It's only three questions. This is probably the least amount of questions you'll see in a knowledge check. They're usually anywhere from three to seven questions. 
Okay. And this is one of the quizzes. And when you go into a quiz, you click attempt quiz. The quizzes do great automatically. You can flag a question for review. If you notice, there's a little flag there now. Uh, once you answer the questions, you just click next to go through. And at the end, you'll be able to see what you got right, what you got wrong. So the students can continue to remediate themselves. I'm going to skip straight to number eight and click finish attempt so you can see what it looks like when you submit the quiz. So I'm going to say submit all, submit and finish. And you can see from the questions I answered, I can see what the correct answer was. So if I want to retake the quiz, I can and have an opportunity to improve my grade. Okay. And once I finish the review, I simply click and review, and I have the ability, like I said, to reattempt it or move on. Okay, so that's pretty much the scaffold of the way the courses kind of go along. You read a little bit, or the teacher teaches you, and then you have a knowledge check. And all of the knowledge check on drag and drops, we have flashcards, we have uh, drag and drops where you have to fill in a tool panel. Uh, here's one of the flashcards I was telling you about. And these are a little bit more rigorous because you actually have to type the answer in. Okay. And again, at the end, you can see what you got right, what you got wrong, and then retry. Our main thing is to make sure the student understands how to use the software and can move around. We're trying to make kids college and career ready, right? As well as making sure they have a grade to go in the grade book, which will go in their report card. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip to chapter two so I can show you how the um, activities look that you work inside the application. I'm gonna start with 2.3, which is working with grids and guides, okay? So you have the topic, you have the knowledge check, then you have the practice and quiz. So I'm gonna go right into the practice. Now from the practice page, you can see you have the ability to practice in a simulated environment and you have a, the option of practicing in the actual software. So in a simulated environment, we want to make sure we're appealing to all four learning styles, audio learners, visual learners, reading and writing, and kinesthetic. So for our audio and visual learners, we actually have a Select the view video tab. that they can watch. Select show. Select grid. And to make that large or small, I just used my escape key. So now the student sees how to complete the simulation. So when they click launch simulation, it's actually gonna open up something that looks like Photoshop, but it's not Photoshop. And they have the ability to work on it in a hands-on environment. So select view show grid is the first action. So I select view. Now let's say I click wrong, I click here. I'll get an incorrect. If I click wrong again, I get an incorrect. And the third time it lights up in green where I should have clicked, but I'm deducted points. So this is a great way for students to work on an activity. They don't have to have the software. It's hands-on and it's rigorous. Once I complete the activity, I'll have a green button that lights up here that says to uh, submit and I'll see what my score was. But I'm not going to watch you. I'm not going to make you watch me click through this because that would be tedious. If the student has a licensed copy of the software on their computer, they can actually practice inside the application. And this is really cool. Again, there's a video showing you exactly how to complete the lesson. And now I'm ready to try it in Photoshop. So when I click, click here to download, I open up the Photoshop file that was downloaded onto my computer. And it's opening up on my second screen. So bear with me one second while Photoshop opens. And I always like to do this from a dead standstill. So you can see exactly what the student experience will be when they're working inside the application. So now Photoshop is open. And if you've noticed, MSI courseware panel is inside Adobe Photoshop. It's gonna verify that I'm a user and my username and password. And now here you go, I'm able to do the actual lesson. Now, the last time I had this open, I was doing a quiz. So as you can see, I have to add a horizontal guide and position it to 100. And then I have to view the vertical guide and position it to 500. So I already know how to do this. So I'm going to go to, okay. So you can see it just realized I'm doing a practice. So in the practice, it gives me the step-by-step -step instructions instead of me just having to recall it. If I'm not sure how to do one step, I can click here and actually get a video hint of how to do it. Okay, I'll make that bigger for you folks in TV land. 
right? So I'm not a big fan of video courses. With video courses, um, research shows you have about two minutes before you meet your diminishing return, before the students just kind of tune out. So I like video snippets to show the student exactly what they need to do. So let me just show you this one. So add a horizontal guide in position to 100. So I have the step-by-step -step instruction. So I know that it's view, new guide, horizontal, 100. So I've done it a thousand times. I click OK. And did you see my guide just appear? And if I click check my work, our API is actually going to check that I did that actual thing correct. And there's three more items in this <clears throat> particular exercise. So in the practice, we had the step-by-step activities and then in the quiz they just have to recall the steps and again that's a high level of rigor which is going to help the students prepare for that certification exam okay so that's the way our courses are set up for adobe um, and now i'm going to show you uh, microsoft word just to give you an idea it's the same kind of setup um, let me just get to a word class for you Templates here. Okay. <clears throat> so as you can see, pretty much everything's set up the same, branded for you, logo, what you're going to be learning, instructor support materials. These are all hidden from the students. We also give you in both courses the... Um, PDFs for each chapter. So you can actually download the PDFs. So if you want to use those to inform a lecture or a discussion, we provide those for you. Okay. And for the Microsoft Office courses, it kind of jumps right into utilizing the simulation and the in-app. So you have the read along feature, you have the introduction, what certification domains are being covered, pre and post assessments but I do just want to show you one of the N apps. Um, there's a knowledge check. You can see this one is seven questions. Okay, so as we discussed, there's the N app and there's the simulation. And I'll just show you the N app very quickly. We're very proud of this feature. Um, <clears throat> It's hard to find that feature that actually grades and keeps track of the student's work and goes into the grade book. Hang on, I've got a lot of things open here. Okay, so for this, you have to just enable editing and there's my MSI courseware icon that's free from the Microsoft Store and by step-by-step -step instructions. And again, with the snippet video, show me how to complete each activity. So, <clears throat> and this one I can do super quick too, but it's worth seeing. I have to go to the font dialog, go to expanded, and I believe it's three points. These are all of the instructions is what I'm following. Click OK, you saw it expand, <clears throat> and check my work, and there you go. Okay, so that's the MSI courseware. Uh, we have a full grade book. And if you go, if I go to uh, student resources, excuse me, if I go to course navigation, you'll be able to see all the participants in your course that will be listed here and grades for each of the students. Let me see if I have an active course so I can show you. We also are international. So we have courses in Brazil and China we just got. So a lot going on. All right. I don't have an active grade book I can show you. But. That's what I have. Does anybody have any questions or would you like me to go into any more detail on any areas? Actually, Terrence, I'd love for you to just go through the different options we have. So let me just pull up the uh, PowerPoint real quick. Okay, great. Well, then I just lost my Zoom screen one second. <laughs> no worries. Keeps moving on my computer. I have two things open.
you could just let me see if you can see the PowerPoint now. Okay. Um, oh, let me stop sharing. Okay. Maybe that's it. Okay, now I just see your welcome screen. Okay, so here is the office version. Yes. So I think if we want to just talk, there's two options available um, from Studica. There's the Microsoft Office and then the Adobe. Yes. Um, and if you have any questions about either of those, you can feel free to email us at info at studica.com or I will be sending a link to um, the recording of the webinar and other helpful information in a few days. And there's also um, in that email, there will be information if you want to get a trial set up. And Terrence, did you want to add anything? I don't see any other questions in the chat. No, I don't think so. I want to appreciate, I, I want to tell you how much I appreciate you taking time to uh, view the MSI curriculum. We're very proud of it. We have a heart for education. And um, we hope you uh, request a trial. I think you will enjoy it. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Terrence, for your time. We appreciate you all, and you will be hearing from me soon. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.